Hi. Hello. What's going on? They seem to have removed the way I actually play this game. So that's uh that's nice. Thanks. I don't even know where to begin with this. I guess I start by saying that I do appreciate that they are trying something different. I think it keeps TF2 interesting with big changes like this. So I'm very supportive of that. Keep doing it. But that doesn't really change the fact that this update was a complete broken mess. And I usually have pretty low expectations for updates. So this update could have been alright if everything they introduced was even close to working as intended. And even then there were many many questionable decisions made here. I'm not really going to talk too much about the most obvious problems. The abandonings and the players not being replaced and the long wait times and the cheating and sometimes being put on the wrong map and all that stuff that they should have fixed a long time ago maybe in a beta or something I don't know just an idea so the way I used to play TF2 was like this I searched for whatever map I wanted to play in the server browser Got maybe a couple good servers to choose from, I pick one, and if it seems alright, I stay there, possibly for hours. This option is now pretty much completely gone from the game, as they removed quick play and uh, pub servers. And that's kind of the biggest bummer for me, that they removed so many options that we used to have, and made the game more limited. Before, if you wanted to play on a Valve server with good ping, on a very specific map and scramble the teams every round for two hours you could probably make that happen it was kind of up to the players now if we assume that valve top servers are gone forever a big problem for many people is going to be finding a good even slightly comparable community server and depending on where you're located that might actually not be possible and that's that you kind of just have to move on. So what they really should do is create some sort of quick play system for community servers. Otherwise it's going to be real tough for them to get populated and uh, reliable in any way. Because right now people just keep joining the already established servers that they are used to playing on. Even if they are actually pretty bad servers. And many newer ones are just sitting there empty. And a few years back, I guess, community servers were all I ever played on. But they were also really good back then. I think the servers I played on the most were called Rocket Blast or something like that. If anyone remembers those. They were really good. Great players, great admins. Just great. Anyway, for now, I would say to try and support smaller good community servers as much as possible. If normal pubs is something you enjoy, that is. I'm going to try and play on a new Badwater server called badwater.pub as much as I can, for example. And you should too, if you're into that sort of thing. But yeah, there are many, many good servers that need support, hopefully by Valve themselves, by making them more visible. Okay, let's just go through all the weird stuff in this update. So. In the casual mode, other than the problems I've already talked about, not having auto balance is the worst idea. I never understood why people complain about auto balance. Sure, sometimes you get moved just before you're about to win, which is, I mean, that's just funny. The worst thing is when you get moved to the winning team when you should have lost. Man, I hate winning. I feel like that problem would be fairly easy to fix if they tried, but it sure is better than not having auto balance at all. If you end up on a control point map in casual mode, it could take less than 3 minutes for a team to steamroll the whole match. And then you're back to searching. This happened to me multiple times. And kind of the opposite of that is another thing that happened to me on a payload map, where our team completely outmatched the other team 
and they had no chance to even leave their spawn. So the only options you have are basically stand there and watch for 9 minutes straight or leave the server and not get the XP. It might have been the most boring TF2 experience I've ever had. It was kind of amazing. So even if they were to implement a traditional auto balance, the first round could always be a steamroll because there is nothing to balance as there are no rankings. So it would almost not matter because the matches are so short. It's just an overall poorly thought out mode that I think they have to rethink quite a bit for it to make sense to me. They could add a warm up round to figure out the balance first and then the match starts. Although that would be weird for some maps I guess. Casual mode might also benefit from having a map voting system or letting you extend the current map. So if you are having a good time on the server you don't have to leave and find new people. But also if your friend wants to join you let them do that as well somehow. It would be very nice if they actually made it a little less involved and you know more casual. Also I was thinking if they had added all of these casual HUD elements like the class portraits at the top and keeping round score and all the stuff that makes it feel more like a match. If those were added to the old pub servers instead of this whole new mode without all the round limits and other restrictions wouldn't that have achieved almost exactly the same thing while still keeping some of the pub spirit but also making it feel more like a match? I don't know. Alright, so what's wrong with competitive mode then? Well, the one thing I wanted from this update was if I join a competitive game that it at least tries to match up the teams to be somewhat equal. But almost all games I've played so far ended up being a steamroll. I think they also have said that the ranking system is actually broken right now. So it could potentially work in the future. But come on, that's the one thing you cannot mess up. They didn't have any placement matches either, which should have helped. Also my rank got reset back to 1 after a while, which is cool. Now, I really do not care about what my rank is or what my level is in this game. So that part of the update didn't do much for me. It's just numbers. Really all that matters is are the games balanced or are they not? Of course it's not going to be perfect. Matchmaking never really is. But this is broken so... Another question I have is will there actually be enough players for this competitive mode to work. I don't know. Also when it comes to your rank I think you should gain more or less rank based on how well you are doing individually. So if you do the most damage or healing or whatever but you still lose you should lose less or maybe even gain rank if you did really well to reflect that. I don't know if the medals already are doing something like this but if they are, it's not very clear. The competitive mode also really needs to introduce new players to this thing and how it's different, which they do not do at all. They don't tell you anything. They should have you go through tutorials showing you what the objective is and see what classes are viable in certain situations, stuff like that. Instead, new players trying this out are probably just going to get rolled because of the broken ranks and that's it. Just a terrible introduction. Okay, then we have all of the different settings they force on you in competitive. Everything from brightness to net graph, view models and many other options that doesn't make any sense. And the weird bug where all these settings get stuck if you decide to play casual or whatever after playing some competitive is also still there from the beta. Good stuff. Really that beta didn't seem to do anything. I don't get it. Same problems if not more. So I don't know if this is right but 
The reasoning for locking the settings in competitive is that they want streams to look better and more consistent, I guess. And also they want it to be an even playing field. So, I'm just wondering, aren't there going to be a lot of people streaming casual mode or proper competitive matches? Or stuff like uh, jump maps or other random stuff? Where these settings are not forced. So then what? If anything it's confusing that it would uh, allow different settings for different modes. And if it is about making an even playing field and not giving anyone an unfair advantage, well, they are still allowing custom HUDs, which can certainly be an advantage. HUDs also changes how the game looks quite a bit, so that's a weird decision there. And I think you can still use scripts and stuff like that if you want, which are not very fair, are they? Most people seem to not like the forced view models very much either, which I agree with. The locked FOV is real bad, but I bet they will let us increase that pretty soon. And the view model min mode is fine, but I think it looks pretty bad. If you want to say that the reason the view models are forced is so that people can look at streams and see cool skins and then go buy a bunch of keys, I guess I can believe that. Also, it seems like people already figure out how to hide view models anyway, so they might want to fix that, I guess. But yeah, if you force a bunch of graphical options that changes how the game looks and also decreases a lot of people's frame rate in only one mode of the whole game, the competitive mode, and in a game that has fairly constantly been updated with new ways to customize it, however you want, that is quite odd. So if you're someone that has always played with the uh, default graphics or close to it and you don't have any frame rate issues or anything, this is not really a problem. You won't really notice any difference, it's fine. I don't really have any frame rate problems on most maps. It gets a little weird on bigger maps like Swiftwater, but mostly it's fine. I would still like to be able to actually increase my brightness though, but I guess I have to go buy a new monitor to level the playing field. Hmm. Okay, one more tiny thing. I would like to be able to pick what maps I want to play in competitive as well, or at least ban a few of them. Would like to not play Vanguard ever again, thank you. So yeah, that's it. They are making it very difficult for me to get excited about this competitive mode with all these problems. Which is a shame. I would probably play quite a bit of this if it weren't such a big hassle to get into. When in fact this should have been the absolute easiest and best time to do this. In a best case scenario I should have been able to just start searching for a competitive game get into a balanced match fairly quickly and then have the game feel exactly like I'm used to after playing it for years, then hopefully have a fun match and at the end get rewarded for what I did and then want to play more of it. That didn't quite happen. So yeah, competitive is actually a pretty weird fit for TF2. It feels incredibly forced and bolted on to this weird random game. It made a little more sense to me when all I thought they were going to do is add one mode that is focused on competitive. But they kind of made it all competitive. The difference between casual and comp is close to nothing at this moment. But that will probably change. But I mean even the fact that you do not have access to every unlock from the start in this game doesn't make any sense at all for this. And if that's something that I heard as a new player I would not even consider playing this game. And the only reason I'm okay with this now is because I played for so long that it is no longer a problem. And the many items are straight up upgrades as well and other items are completely useless. And there are so many of them as well. Do you balance them for casual or competitive? 
Okay, so there was certainly some other good stuff in this update as well. I haven't really talked about here, but yeah, this update was so messy. You know, if they fix all the bugs and all the big flaws with the different modes and make it really easy to join and find community servers and maybe even a new way to manage them, if they do all that, then this update is alright. But right now, it seems we are pretty far away from that. And they actually made me want to play TF2 less with this update. I will still play, but man, that's impressive. Good job. Alright, bye bye. See you next year when I upload another video.